Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we actually have a very special guest. We are joined by Ashley from Plant Me Ashley. I am so excited to be doing this collab. Say hello, me Ashley. Too. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. So we have been wanting to do a collab together and we figured that an awesome topic to cover would be kind of winter plant care in the winter, um, just winter plant vibes. Just um, winter. So just, just winter in general. Yeah, winter you know, in general. We're going, into, <laughs> we're going into the cooler season, so we really wanted to make a couple of videos revolving around that. So in this video here on my channel, we are going to be giving you guys some hot tips for plant care in the winter. Wow, how many times am I going to say winter in this? Wait, that was such a good title you just like threw out there. Hot tips for plant care in the winter. <laughs> we are going to be talking about that in this video right here and then over on Ashley's channel, we are featuring some plants that do amazing or have at least been doing amazing for us going into the winter season. So if you are ready to get some hot tips, just keep on watching. Sounds good. Okay. So shall we begin? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that I have written down on our list is lighting, which is obviously yes. a huge one um, when you think about plants in the winter time. Uh, with the seasons changing, we're obviously getting less light. Well, at least I am. <laughs> I'm only speaking for myself here because I know Ashley over there is basking in her south facing windows. <laughs> it's true. I have some pretty large windows. Uh, almost all, I'd say half of my plant collection I keep in these windows. Uh, but yeah, it's okay you're, though because I only have like 17% household humidity naturally and you're resting at like 60% so. Right, yeah. So we have a little <laughs> bit of opposite yeah. conditions going on. Yeah, so it's kind sure. of interesting to hear from both of us. Um, so for me, as a lot of you guys know, I am over here in the rainy, gloomy lands of Vancouver Island, so I am not getting a lot of light at all. Um, I will have maybe one or two sunny days a week. Um, Wait, that's so it? Really? It's just yeah, cloudy the rest yeah. of the time? Yeah, cloudy and rainy. Sometimes I won't see the sun for like a couple of weeks straight. <laughs> Yeah, it's wild. But you get the rain, right? It's like rainy for you. But we get the rain. Yeah, we I get the love rain. rain. Oh my God. Yeah, we get the sun here, but it's literally never, it never rains. We go weeks without rain. So it is not the best. Yeah, so crazy. That's so crazy to me. So for some reason, I thought that I was going to be able to make it through the winter without having any grow lights, but no, that was not going well. So now I have a lot of grow lights in my home, which has really been helping a lot. Um, so I guess it kind of depends where you live, but I think that grow lights can really be beneficial, especially if you have a larger plant collection. Um, you guys know that I have been talking a lot about the Mother Plant Spectrum grow lights. I'm still absolutely loving those. They work amazing. What about you, Ashley? Do you use any? grow lights so i use grow lights for in my actual grow tent i'm blessed that even in the winter it's like december 5th i think the day we're filming this and i haven't needed to add any grow lights out here but i feel like yeah i feel like with grow lights it's tricky because people are always like ashley fern like what lights do you like and it's like there's a lot of lights i've liked that i've tried um i think if you're wanting something more like put together you really want to like make your space look complete there's really good soltech solution grow lights that are pretty like aesthetic yeah, are and also do a lot of good but i think it's easier to answer like what grow lights don't we like uh and for me yes. I i've only really tried one kind of light that i don't like and it's not any particular brand it's just like the clip light have you tried those fern where it's like it clips onto something and then there's three or four heads and it just falls off i've never tried them They've, I've, I've I don't heard know. that people haven't liked them very much. Yeah. So. I don't know. They're like super inexpensive. So it's like you get what like you get what you can get. Right. If you're in a pinch right. and you're super on a budget, like they're going to be better than nothing. But for me, right. like you, you can't clip them on anything without them just falling off. And they sat in my garage for like a year before I decided to finally get rid of them. So I don't know. <laughs> That's my take. 
yeah i haven't really tried any that i don't like but yeah i haven't tried those crazy arm ones i've definitely seen them a lot before yeah well and that was a the thing they like worked really well for sun stressing my hoya but i didn't find they did that well with my other plants because like they're connected on an arm right so like there's the head and then the, the little neck right and they're not that long so you can't really use them for plants that are anywhere over half of a foot too so right they're yeah that well. makes sense Okay, I actually have a question for you. So I know that you get good sun, but I'm assuming that you're getting less hours of sunlight going into the winter. So do you find that that's yeah. a problem at all? Okay, so right now... What time is it? Okay, so right now it's literally five. Uh, and I had to move from sitting on the floor. We just filmed the, the other collab, the one from my channel. And the sun drastically just like collapsed <laughs> um so it's just about five and it's almost dark so like i'm straight my window is right here and i'm like hello window <laughs> so yes it is definitely <laughs> getting a little darker but the sun rises here like 7 30 so my plants are still getting well over eight hours of direct that's pretty good yeah pretty direct light so I don't think I'm too worried. I think if anything, I'm more worried about the temperature dropping by the window and do I need to move my plants away from the window? Right, yes. Yes, that is actually our next point. Should we move along to temperature yeah. and humidity or do you have anything else to add? I don't honestly okay. have that much for light. <laughs> okay, so the next one is temperature and humidity. So as Ashley just mentioned, um, sometimes you have to move your plants away from windows. Uh, depending how cold it gets where you are, uh, you might have some frosty windows going on and your plants are not going to like that. I was having a bit of a problem with that with one of my Marantas. Um, it was looking a little sad just because I think it was getting a bit too cold. And I've actually moved a lot of my plants off of my windowsills. Like I said, it doesn't get freezing here, not very often at least, um, but it's still cold enough that my plants don't love being pressed yeah. up against that super frigid glass. Um, yeah, and also adding on to that, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but for some reason houses, at least the houses that I've lived in here, I always have um, like the heating vent right under the window. So it just gets like blasted with heat. And I have no idea why it's set up like that, but that's another reason that I kind of have to move my plants away from the window because your plants aren't gonna love um, just getting, yeah, blasted by heat or air conditioning or whatever you have coming out of those vents. Yeah, that would dry them out so badly. Yeah. Yeah, mine are on my ceiling and I have them pointed away from the window. So it blows air mm. towards the middle of my living room. But also they're like, gosh, maybe five feet away from the closest, the top of the closest plant. So, wow, I didn't even think about that. You have vents on your floor. Yeah, we have vents on our floor. Are your vents on your ceiling? Yeah, the they're on my ceiling. Oh! Oh, weird. Uh, and your plants are also on your ceiling? Like uh, you're hanging plants there. Yeah, I have like this big curtain rod that's just for plants. There's no curtain there. Right, right. Uh, and there's two, but I have everything facing away from the plants and I haven't had any problems so far. Well, I never even good. thought about nice. that. The more you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mine will just like, yeah, they'll fry whatever is above there. Yeah. <laughs> I found that um, like the lack of light can really be counteracted by a couple things, and I found temperature is definitely one of them. Back when I used to live in a dorm, I had a tiny north-facing dorm, uh, and it was so small, and it was so hard to keep warm, uh, but we would, I mean, obviously we lived in a dorm, we didn't pay for the heat or the electricity but me and my roommate we keep it pretty warm in there because we were pretty high up and for some reason in a stone building the heat doesn't stick around so we would keep it maybe like 75 in there because in Boise it gets really cold it can get down to like five degrees in the winter uh which okay so our freezing is 32 I don't know how to do the conversion but our freezing is 32 it's degrees I'm like trying and to it, think of what that would be <laughs> it can get down to five your freezing is zero, so it would probably get down yeah. to like negative, gosh, I don't even know. It would, it would be cold. below though for you, like well below. So it gets yeah. very cold here. Like you can't even keep some plants outside in the winter, ones that you mm. normally could. So I found that by keeping it warmer and even a little bit more humid, which we'll get into in a second, um, 
plants don't need as much of a light kind of a vibe like i feel like plants are on like a sliding scale and if you have like really low light i feel like you can counteract it by like high heat and high temperature or high humidity yeah that's that's so interesting well that's just how i would do it at my dorm like i didn't have a lot to work with yeah. there and i had no light like at all but because i had such high humidity and i would keep the house just a little bit warmer uh which is mm -hmm. can be expensive to do depending on where you live uh mm -hmm. i found that my plants were able to do well even without the extra light yeah i feel like heat is kind of underestimated in the yeah. plant community like i feel like it makes a really big difference as far as plant growth goes have you ever used a heating mat uh, I used to have one and I gave it away when I moved. I don't know. I have this weird paranoia about a fire starting in my house. I have the same And I already have, fear. I have so many things like plugged in and running. So that was just like an extra thing that I was like, mm, maybe not. Yeah, I've never used a <laughs> but heating I know, mat. But I know that they I've were heard, great. Yeah, I've heard that they're amazing, especially for like perlite propagation, which I know we both do. I just watched yeah. your video on updating your perlite propagation. Yeah, I would love to have one under my prop boxes, but yeah, but it's no, scary. Big currently. scary. It's scary. <laughs> I'm like, is this a real fear? Like, does this happen to people? I don't, I know. don't I think don't it does. does. <laughs> like my grow light that I have in my grow tent, I'm always worried I'm gonna like leave it on on accident when I'm not home, which I do all the time on accident. Yeah. <laughs> and it never gets hot. Like that light never gets hot. It never like like mm. I can always touch it even if it's been on for like 12 hours. And I'm always oh, wow. worried, like, it's gonna, it's gonna catch fire. It's gonna, it never does. Yeah. And <laughs> I, it's like the curling iron. What is it called? Like the curling iron fear. Like every, yes. Oh you my gosh. Long hair Did I unplug it? <laughs> yeah. Did I unplug my curling iron? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as I said, um, in my climate, my humidity is pretty good. My house tends to sit around 50% just without any help. Um, I do have one humidifier going in my room, which I've had for a couple of years. It's been going strong. It's by Alec Homes. I've talked about it before. Uh, yeah, that's the only one that I have, and I don't really need any extra help other than that. What about you, Ash? It's funny you bring up Alec Homes because <laughs> my only humidifier is also by Alec Homes. And I do want to say, like, for me, they did send me this, so I didn't purchase this. I just feel like I should say that. Um, yeah, they sent you mine too. However, yeah, they sent you yours too? Yeah. Yeah, so, but I will say, I've been working with Alec Homes for two years, and this is not sponsored. Fern and I discussed this beforehand. We were like, oh, we both use this. We should talk about it, because we both yeah. like it, um, which I think is important yes. to share. Um, and Alec Homes has also never paid me. However, if I didn't like this humidifier, I would buy a different one. Like if it didn't work and I didn't like it, I would not use it. Um, and I find for me with things just like, gosh, I'm lazy, you guys, and I'm really sorry, but I really need a top fill. This is a top fill, so you can take this oh, whole thing. Oh, me too. I yeah. cannot mess around with bottom fill. Like, so you no. take this whole thing out and you can like put it in your bathtub or wherever and just fill it up there and then you just put it back on and then you put the lid on and i'm glad we're on the same mindset because gosh i could never have anything that's not a top fill i'm just so lazy and i know i, I would know. never fill it up like ever yeah the elect homes are so easy Love yeah it. i really like them um this is my fourth humidifier it's nice i think this is my favorite model i don't think i remember what the model is uh but if you care enough you can just search elect homes and find it um but i don't know i'll put, we it, both... I'll put it in the description box <laughs> oh cool yeah we both just so happened to have a like homes and we thought that that was really funny <laughs> any other humidifier suggestions <laughs> no i just you bring up the butt plug ones <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> you're the person that said it looked like that <laughs> yeah i did and you can keep that in your video if you want i mean it does look <laughs> like kind of like one but <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's these like really tiny little humidifiers and they <laughs> kind of look a little silly, but if you're, I can't talk, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're really balling on a budget, um, 
they look yeah, like this option. if Fern will put a video or photo there or something maybe she won't maybe she'll forget and then there's nothing here but no, uh, I'll put a photo <laughs> <laughs> but it's a teeny little humidifier um, and you stick it in a water bottle or like a cup of water and if you just need to supplement humidity to like one plant they're really good and they're gosh I think we looked the other day and they're like 11 bucks from Walmart or something yeah they're yeah. super affordable I yeah. I actually used to have one um actually you know what it's coming to me now the brand of mine was called atmofix have you seen that on instagram i actually haven't i've seen it going around a little bit um yeah there's a brand that makes them i think you have to order from their website but yeah we did also see them on walmart and amazon so it's super accessible if you guys yeah. want to pick one up but yeah it's just like a little mini yeah, humidifier and they honestly work pretty good they do like, yeah I'm i used surprised. to have one yeah, like it wasn't bad. It would really pump out the mist. I was pretty impressed. The only thing is that you have to fill up the jar yeah. or whatever vessel you have it in like kind of frequently, but yeah. other than that, like it worked pretty good. Yeah, and the little tube for it isn't that long. I think at longest they get like this big. And um, so you can't like cheat and put it in like a big, a big thing of water, like a vase, cause it, it won't reach. But I think for right. like a, like one spot or if you have a humidity cabinet, and like an ikea or something right or maybe an off i don't want to say off brand or maybe a more accessible type of humidity cabinet uh, or even a grow tent you can put it in there and you really don't need to add too much humidity to a grow tent because they'll already or cabinet because they'll already have so much uh just from being right. a closed environment where your plants are after especially after watering right. so i don't know yeah. it's a really good thing to just have i've been wanting to get one as well uh, so I don't know. I think they're nice and they're so affordable. So yeah. Yeah. I know that there's other hacks that people talk about to raise humidity. Like there's the pebble trays yeah, and pebble trays together and stuff. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like those things don't really make that big of a difference. Like in my yeah. opinion, I feel like if you really want to boost the humidity in your house, you kind of have to go the route of a humidifier. Um, but well, I know that there are some other kind of hacks. Yeah. Yeah. Do you I do think any of those types of things. So I really don't try to fight this problem of no humidity in my house because my house is just <laughs> like one room, like my kitchen, my living room, hallway to the front door, like it's one space and I would need like 10 humidifiers uh, and who wants to do that? Not me at all. I don't even yeah. want to fill up my one humidifier. So um, <laughs> the only thing I think about pebble trays is like it's really small and localized it's better than nothing like if you have no alternative but the other thing a pebble tray won't even really work if you don't get light because it's like the mm. light that makes the water vaporize and do the right. condensation thing and i find that i never thought about that before yeah well i think for if you have a pebble tray and you're putting it in an ikea cabinet that's different because it's a closed environment it's kind of like a terrarium um and i know that whenever i just water in my grow tent it really increases the humidity so I think just yeah, having with my water. cabinets. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I actually have like um, one of the accessories in my IKEA cabinet are like little. Oh, maybe you can kind of see it actually on my camera. Um, I they're can. Like little drawers, and I actually fill up those little containers with water, so it just kind of boosts the humidity humidity a little bit in there. But I don't have humidifiers or anything. Um, yeah, and it stays super high, especially after watering, and especially because I have my moss poles and stuff. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was a long, long one. It was. I <laughs> a lot to say boring. about humidity. <laughs> it is. It's a really big one, especially for the winter when yeah. we have heat going and everything. Sorry. Okay, amazing. so next on the list, I have fertilizing. Yes, um, I, I feel like that. this uh, can be a little bit controversial. There's just different opinions yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I fertilize all year round. Um, yeah, I basically, I do like the same amount and everything. I fertilize almost every watering and that works great for me. I've never really had any ill effects from that. Um, if you're worried about it, maybe you can dilute your fertilizer a little bit more. But in my opinion, as long as your plants are growing, like I guess if you have a plant that's just been completely dormant, then it doesn't yeah. you don't need to worry about it. But if your plants are growing, then I think it's perfectly acceptable and even encouraged to fertilize all year round. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of an industry lie that you don't yeah. fertilize during the winter. Like outside plants, it makes sense because they're not going to grow because there's, okay, gosh, I think it's, 
annuals. They go away and come back every mm. year, right? I might be mixing annual and perennial, but I'm pretty sure perennial never needs to go away. If I'm getting that right, <laughs> if I'm getting that wrong, it's awkward. Know. But I do know that outdoors, there are some plants that die off in the winter and come back in the spring and summer. Uh, and those are plants you wouldn't want to fertilize in the winter because they're not going to come back. There's no point. But indoors, if you're growing tropical houseplants, there is no need to not fertilize in the winter. In fact, I really feel like yeah. you'd be doing your plants a disservice by halting their growth in the winter just because it's winter but indoors like your plants shouldn't be seeing winter conditions they should be seeing pretty consistent people conditions exactly that's the thing we round. kind of like manip mm -hmm. manipulate the conditions in our homes for our yeah. plants so yeah it's different yeah. than if they were just like out in the wild experiencing all of the seasons on their own <laughs> out in the wild <laughs> <laughs> out in the wild <laughs> yeah so that's that one's pretty straightforward. <laughs> do you want to talk about what fertilizers we use? Or do you not want to? Um, so for fertilizer, I've been using the same thing for quite some time now. Nothing's really changed with my routine. I'm still using the uh, GrowTech Vitamax Pro. And I also mix that with a couple drops of Super Thrive. And my plants have been doing amazing. I am curious to kind of branch out and try different fertilizers. Just because I've just been... Actually... That's not true. I do use Osmocote now, a slow release fertilizer, because I've got Thanks. so many climbing plants and moss poles going on now. So it's just yeah. easy to use that and then just throw them in my shower. So yeah. yeah, I am using that a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how my plants grow on that. But yeah, that's kind of my fertilizing routine. Super simple. Yeah, I've heard really good things about Osmocote and Super Thrive. Super Thrive yeah. is great because it's accessible to you in Canada and to me yeah. in the States. So it's not like someone can't get it. What I use you can't get is Liquid Art. Uh, I've been using Liquid yes. Art for a hot minute uh, for like over a year now. <laughs> like probably a year. Uh, gosh, I'm bad at telling time, but I think it might be a year and a quarter. It's been a long time. Uh, and I've never had any issues. Liquid Art's kind of a... A really interesting and there's like 18 ingredients in it and it doesn't exactly have a true NPK uh, because it's more of like a fertilizer in plant food so it's a little weird and I found you can't really over fertilize with it like you mm. can over fertilize cool. with more chemical based fertilizers and so that's why right, I enjoy yeah, it leaf burn and yeah and while yeah, Raven cool. doesn't eat my plants she will lick water out of the trays if there's mm. water left in trays, which is really scary for me because she can, she can do that whenever I'm not looking like there's plants everywhere. Um, and I also like liquid art because it is, I mean, you shouldn't drink liquid art, but if you were to drink it or your kid got into <laughs> it or your pet got into it, like they're going to be fine. It's not poisonous unless you like i'm just like don't drink it you guys okay it's not a drink but <laughs> like you're gonna be fine you know what i mean it's not like you're drinking chemical right. or like some not super toxic. crazy fertilizer yeah one thing i would like to try is calmag like calmag oh actually supplements. that's what i want to try too yeah yes i've never used that but yeah. i see people have amazing results from it mm -hmm. yeah so that was something yeah. i was gonna i think gift myself for christmas with some calmag nice. and then try it out nice <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, um, so I guess that brings us to the next point. Another thing that we do all year round, which can be a little bit controversial as well, which is repotting. At least I repot all year round. I also I'm repot that you all do year too. round. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Gosh, yeah, we're honestly... so controversial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> um. I feel like it's kind of the same thing like we're manipulating the environment around our plants like we can mm -hmm. we're controlling the temperature humidity lighting so they're kind of getting they're just they're not experiencing a true winter so mm -hmm. there's really no reason to not be repotting like especially yeah. if they're still growing especially if a plant needs a repot i'll have people ask me all the time on instagram and whatnot if they should repot their plant and i always say like if it's root bound if it needs to be repotted then like a hundred percent go for it um the only thing that i would suggest is to just maybe be a little bit more gentle with the root ball like don't go in there tearing all the roots apart um i don't really mess with the roots 
that much even more when I repot it all. I just kind of, mm -hmm. I'll maybe loosen them up a little bit and then just kind of stick it in and, you know, add the new soil and everything. And the yeah. roots are going to get through. Like they're not going, you don't really need to go in there and start tearing everything apart. Um, and your plant's just gonna have a tougher time recuperating from that. So that's the one thing that I would keep in mind when repotting in the winter or any time really. Yeah, I would agree. I. I completely agree anytime. I see people repot yeah. plants and there, you know, there's truly no right or wrong way to do anything plant related. But I find I lose plants at a pretty significant rate after repotting them if I do anything to their roots. Um, like I've never lost a plant from, you know, turning it upside down, taking the pot off, sticking a pot on top, flipping it over and then filling it in with more soil, you know? Right. But when yeah. I break up the root ball, I'll lose leaves or like the whole plant sometimes. <laughs> so whenever I see people repotting, I really think when you're breaking up the root ball for something like that, I mean, it needs to be a tremendously large plant. Like you can't get it out of the pot unless you break up the root ball a little bit, kind of a vibe, like a 14 or a right. 16 inch kind of a round. Maybe you're repotting a monstera or like outdoor plants are a little bit more hardy. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there are plants out there that literally grow through the concrete. Um, <laughs> and so you can be a little <laughs> bit more rough with your outdoor plants because they are made for the outdoors, but these children are yeah, so true. domesticated. They, <laughs> They need to be babied and I, I just treat it like a plug. Like if you get a two inch plug, you stick it in a pot and you fill soil in around it. There's no reason in my opinion to break up the roots and ruin all the progress we've made with growing those roots. Yeah. In. Cause everyone wants new yeah. leaves and your plant won't be able to grow new leaves if it has to focus on roots. Exactly. You're just like injuring it for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think so, just watering, right? And pests. Watering and pest management. Oh, pest management. Goodness gracious. Okay. We Let's can just give like watering. general tips for that because I have aphids right yeah. now, so I don't get to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for watering, um, I wrote down adjust accordingly because we're all experiencing different conditions. Like for me, I'm noticing that I have to water less, uh, it, like in comparison to the summer when we were having heat waves and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so, which is great for me since I'm an underwater already. Um, yeah, same. But it kind of depends because if your plant is near a heat vent or something like that, then it might be drying out a little quicker or maybe you are somewhere super sunny. So I'm watering less. What about you, Ash? Well, I always water, never. <laughs> but <laughs> in the winter, I definitely can get away with watering even less. It's really not good though. I should be watering more like, oh, please lift. That is not good. That is yeah, not good. I'm the same. So, I should be watering more too. <laughs> yeah. I really need to water my plants more. Uh, but in the winter, I find that they're more forgiving. They won't like yes, lose leaves true. as fast uh, or die as fast. And I don't like, it's just weird because it's like on the one hand, you can water and repot all year round. But genuinely, I really think the only difference the winter brings, if you're not supplementing your light, like I don't supplement my light, if plants get less light, there's less light in general to do the condensation in the soil. So they hold on to water for longer. Like if you have a plant in a darker area, even in the summer, it's not gonna lose water as fast as a plant in a bright area. So right. I think they just get a little bit less light if you're not supplementing don't listen like if you are supplementing with light don't listen to me because your plants are still getting a lot of light they still probably will need a lot of water i just usually do a, a, a heavy test if a plant is still really heavy um uh, yeah that's a good one the heavy test yes <laughs> i agree yeah i would say just take caution as the seasons are changing because you're watering you're probably gonna have to adjust it a little bit so mm -hmm. just pay a little bit more attention as the weather's changing yes Okay, so the last topic we have is a doozy, and it is pests. <laughs> so yeah, it seems to be fall that is the worst season for pests. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about fall. They just, they're just coming in hot as soon as it gets a little yeah. bit cooler. It's like thrip um, season. Fall, like August, yes. October is just like thrip season. It's thrip season, seriously. It's thrip season in my bedroom right now. <laughs> it's not good. 
Oh my god. Um, That's, I do not wish that on my yeah. worst enemy. I know. I've only had thrips one other time, and it was only on one plant, and it didn't monstera? spread at all, luckily. Was it a monstera? Um, no, it was on an alocasia. Yeah, I bought it at a big box store at Canadian Tire, and I Canadian? bought it home, and... Canadian and thrips yeah, hit yeah. different. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was covered in thrips, and oh, I, was like, I wasn't gross. even I wasn't even far into the whole plant journey yet, so I was like, oh god, like, what is this? <laughs> but I somehow managed to get rid of them, and I hadn't seen them again for, like, a couple of years, and then, yeah, it started with my Hoya polyneuras, where I first noticed them, which oh is kind god. of strange, because I don't that think that they normally weird. go for Hoya, no. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, I guess it's don't. more of, like, a thinner leafed Hoya, so I don't know. I don't know what's what's up with that, but yeah, it started with my Hoya polyneura, and now it's spread to a few other plants, so I've been busy spraying everybody down, um, so that's been fun. I know that spider mites is a big one for the fall as well. A lot of people tend to find spider mites in the cooler season. Gosh, I don't know. I have aphids right now. I just discovered them before I started filming. Here's a photo. I'll send it to Fern. She can put it in here. It's disgusting. <laughs> I've never had aphids indoors. I hate indoors. aphids. They look so creepy. Yeah, oh. I've literally never had them before. And it sucks because it's on a plant I really like and I don't know that the plant is worth it to keep. I don't know. You guys, listen. I just want to, like, real talk, okay? In case no one's ever told you this, I'm sure Fern has because Fern's a real one. If there's a plant that has pests on it and it's going to cause you more stress to deal with it than you can expend, you can throw plants away. You really yeah, can. Like I, if something I totally is agree. if something is like like it could be a plant you've had for years too. Like I know we all form emotional attachments. If you want to save it, you absolutely can, but sometimes you know, especially in the winter months, people can be a little bit more sad, a little bit more mellow. And if there's plant like any kind of pest on something and you just don't have the energy like don't let anyone make you feel bad for just tossing it because yeah. sometimes it's, it's what you have to do mental health yeah, yeah. agreed oh my god Fern, we are on the yes. same page yes we are <laughs> <laughs> so um, for me okay so oh, yes i was gonna say no, for me in the go. states i use captain jack's uh to treat my plants and right. i think I see everybody talking about that i know i'm I sorry <laughs> Yeah, uh, neem oil is good too. You also can't get that in Canada. <laughs> um, yeah. But I know that, I mean, I'm sure you probably use some, do you use a store-bought mix or do you use like, I know Lucia on Lulu's Leaves, she uses like peroxide mixed with Dawn mixed with hot water and sprays it. So I use, well, I use a few different things. Um, I have used like the pre-mix, the Safer's spray stuff. Mm -hmm. I've used that before and I think that it worked okay. It just gets so expensive, like having to yeah. buy all of that as opposed to like mixing your own. Yeah, just mixing it at home. home. Yeah. Um, but I have used that. Um, I actually do have neem oil though because I ordered it from the US Amazon. <laughs> and nice. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> Congrats. So it's a big it's only, Thank you. It is. Um, for some reason, I don't know why the laws are so weird around neem oil here, but for some reason, you can buy it. You just can't buy it, like, in a large quantity that's marketed for plants. So I can buy, like, a small bottle from a health food store here, but, yeah, I can't buy, like, the bigger the bigger um, containers that you would normally use for plants. It's very strange. But anyway, so I do have neem oil. Um, so I do use a neem oil mix um, okay, for spraying that's good. down my plants. Nice. Yeah, so I mix it with water and a bit of dish soap and also a bit of um, isopropyl alcohol. That hits different. Yes. Have you and ever used mosquito my... bits? No, I haven't. I haven't either. No, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people talk about them, but I honestly don't have that much of a fungus net situation because of my Same. underwatering, so. Underwatering yeah. saves That's lives. That's like the one benefit to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have almost, even in my grow tent, I have almost no fungus gnats, maybe like one or two, genuinely. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I have any just other tips. Checking, checking your plants more often. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, just take the time to look at their leaves, look at the back of their leaves. Yes. Um, when I water, I've been doing this a lot actually, um, rather than taking my plants to the sink or watering them in their spot, I'll pop them in the shower and just give them a good spray. So it's not going to get rid of an infestation, but it might help prevent a little bit. So I like to do That's that. Smart. And then it just cleans the dust and everything off too. So yeah. That's so smart. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so do we have anything else to add? 
Gosh, you know, I think that's everything. That's everything. Yeah, I, feel I mean, like that was a pretty. Yeah, and I could talk about this for hours, but I feel like that's a really good start, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. If you have any other questions, leave them below in the comments. I would love to answer you. And I guess that's going to be the end of this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to check out Ashley's channel and the video that we did over on her channel. We show some really awesome plants, so you don't want to miss so. that. Thank yeah. you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha.